Welcome back everyone and welcome to my 200th episode. It's very exciting to be able to announce that. And as of this morning, right before recording this video, actually we hit 1200 subscribers dead on the nose. So that is super duper exciting. I wanna thank you guys for your continued support. It's really, really awesome that I have such a great audience. And we're getting closer to that 1500 subscriber mark by the end of the year. It's getting close to the end of May right now. So that means we have just a touch over six months to get to that goal. I think we're going to actually reach it. So how do we celebrate such a momentous occasion? I know by making some sparks. And by that, we're going to be building the mini Tesla coil kit that's based on the Slayer Exciter circuit. And well, if you want to see a little bit more that's involved in this, I can show you this graphic. And this is a uh, actually drawing of the actual PCB with a list of all the parts needed to build it. Now there's tons and tons and tons of videos on YouTube and schematics all over the web on how to do this. This was a kit I purchased off of eBay that already had everything pretty much ready to go. And you're gonna need some heat sink compound for the actual uh, transistor that's in this kit. So that's the only thing you actually have to add to it. And if you're curious, that's a schematic. Now this is the reversed engineered schematic. It's Probably not exactly 100% accurate, but this is just the way I drew it up. Uh, at some point in this video, whether it's gonna be down in the description and an end card at the end, something, I will have some links to some other videos, uh, particularly the Electric Boom video. I know for a fact he did a really nice one explaining how Tesla coils work. And if I can come across the uh, Great Scott one, I'll, I'll possibly put that one in there as well. But there you go. That's pretty much it. Now I'll run through all the parts. We'll, we'll keep this off to the side here and I have my own little notes. I'm just gonna go back over here off camera and just grab the PCB board. You can see they did a good job laying this out. It is pretty basic. Obviously this is where the DC jack goes. This is where your heat sink goes. This is the transistor, the 10K resistor. This is a 1K resistor here. This is a 0.1 microfarad uh, monolithic capacitor. There's two LEDs and the, uh, the positives of those two actually connect to each other. And then there's another connector here. Now I'm thinking this is where you can get external power into it besides the jack. Uh, it does seem like it traces out that way, but it's kind of like in the reverse order of the components. So we'll have to see if that's actually indeed the case. And Tesla coil is just basically a transformer. So this is actually the primary right here, this little uh, spiral. And then the secondary, which is in this little uh, rolled up piece of paper here, is actually going to attach right to that and stand off of it. The only thing besides the heat sink compound that this kit did not include would be some kind of a top load. And that's actually the little ball that you see at the top of most Tesla, uh, Tesla coils. Um, we can actually make that ball out of tin foil. That's what I'm thinking of doing with this one. But we'll go ahead and run through all the parts. I wanna try to make this video as short as possible just because I'm on a bit of a time constraint for tonight for getting this thing shot, edited, and uploaded to YouTube before my typical uh, upload time. So we'll see if we can accomplish that. But yeah, here's that big heat sink and you definitely have to put some kind of compound on it. Uh, we have the transistor, which is going to do all the hard work. This is the BD243C. This is an NPN transistor that's going to sit underneath that screw like that. There's the DC barrel jack. Now, if you're curious, this has a 2.5 millimeter interior uh, dimension and a 5.5 uh, exterior, I should say 5.5 millimeter exterior dimension. That's a very, very common uh, plug. I have plenty of connectors for that. We have the two LEDs. They included a red and a green standard three millimeter LED. This is the monolithic capacitor. And you can see that has 105 on the front of it. The camera will zoom in. It's really, really tiny. Uh, we have a neon indicator tube. Now this is just for experimenting. You're not actually gonna apply this to the circuit at all, but the neon here should get excited by the actual uh, tube here. We have two resistors. And I'll point out the codes. This is the 10K resistor. So the color on this, you're gonna hold the uh, gold band off to the right over here. And it's brown, black, orange, gold. The gold indicates tolerance. So that's a 5% tolerance uh, resistor. Then they also included one of these four band ones. Now I'm not a big fan of the four band ones because they're kind of hard to read. Um, but same thing with this one. 
you're going to hold it where the gold band's off to the right. Now, it's a little harder to see on this blue background here, but this is brown, black, black, brown, gold, and that's to get you 1K. And uh, this has a lot higher of a tolerance. This is only a 1% resistor. And that's really it. That's the entire kit right there. We'll take a look at the coil here. Now, I looked at all this during a recent mailbag episode when I actually received this in. But I'll still point that out anyway. And it's just a little uh, plastic tube, essentially, with some magnet wire uh, on it. And it's actually laminated in tape. And there's a very fine wire on one end over here and a very fine wire on the other than there. Unfortunately, I don't know how many times this was turned. So we'll have to um, possibly see. Uh, I'm, I won't figure it out before I get this edited, but it, it might be in the description if we can figure out how many turns this is. It does have on the board over here 0.13 slash 25 millimeters slash 50 millimeters. So I'm not sure if uh, maybe this is 50 or 25 millimeter. I'll have to break the ruler out and see. And, uh, well, essentially, everything's just going to get lined up on this one for one. It's really a very, very simple build to make. I mean, it's so little components. Um, but there is one thing I want to point out. This has got an enamel coat on it. We're going to have to actually remove the enamel coating on this wire before we do anything with it because it won't take solder. And it's actually going to go through this middle hole right here. So this is going to act, like I said, this is going to be the secondary. So it's going to go in like that. And then it's going to get uh, hot glued dead in the middle of the other coil. Uh, I'm not a big uh, fan of the actual coil being on the bottom of the PCB here. Most of the other uh, um, Tesla coils I've seen had the actual coil wrapped around it somehow. So we're going to see how well that works. But when this is done, we should see a little tiny arc coming off the end of this into the air pretty much and when we get the top load some kind of a ball or something this is going to attach to that and hopefully that'll uh, help amplify things it's supposed to act as a reservoir where it actually will help make this uh, arc a little stronger think of it like a capacitor like it's going to act like a like a big capacitor on top and eventually some point i'll see if i can find online some kind of a, sh a sphere but we're going to consider this like a preliminary build and we'll be experimenting with this as time goes but um, we should be able to take a miniature uh, ccfl bulb or a standard fluorescent tube and excite it with this because this will transmit power wirelessly all right on to the build i'm going to get my soldering iron set up and what i'm actually going to do is, is get the camera oriented at a little bit of a different angle over here and this rest of this build will be like a time lapse -y kind of thing Okay, there's a couple things to point out. Uh, first of all, on the DC jack, there's the two legs we're gonna solder, but there's also this third one over here. This is, um, if you plug it in, if you had like batteries in the circuit, it would kill the batteries, kind of. Uh, we don't need that. There's no space for it actually on this board at all. As you can see, there's only the two holes. So we're gonna have to go ahead and just snip that right off. We'll just use a pair of cutters like this just to get rid of that. Uh, the other thing is, is I'm gonna put a little blob of that heat sink compound here this is just standard stuff you can get at radio shack and that'll go in and screw in like that the other thing i had a little bit of a problem with my camera recently and uh unfortunately for some reason right now i can't zoom in something's not working i've tried the knob on the top i've also tried the actual um tele and wide buttons on the touch screen and it's not doing anything right now so i don't really have time to take apart the camera again at this particular moment so i'll have to do that after the fact um, but right now i'm just gonna have to leave it where it is so sorry incidentally it's probably just something stupid like a, a connector that's not connected or something along those lines we'll have to see but yeah for now we won't worry about it there's that little blob of heat sink compound and I'm gonna go ahead and just to, just to start assembling this. Always start with the lowest components first. LEDs, the longer leads positive. On the board over here, the two positives are in the middle. You can also tell that by the LED symbol that's on the board. The bottom, as you can see over here, this bottom pin here, it's kind of flattened out. The flat side's the negative side. So we're gonna put these in in the proper orientation.
Okay, just gonna trim the uh, little leads on here with a pair of nippers. Now just putting the DC jack on. This I'm gonna hold by hand because it'll be easier. Going with the big clive method over here. And lastly, let's get that transistor and the actual uh, heat sink in. Now this is just a touch dodgy because I noticed before when I was dry fitting everything that the uh, pins on the uh, heat sink were just a touch wider than the pads so I had to kind of bend them outward but you can see it fits in there pretty good it's exactly what we want and I'm just going to bend one of these pins down just for extra stability really make sure that makes great contact there okay and the other thing too is as I'm doing this the heat sink's going to want to wick the heat from the soldering iron so it's good that I have a nice powerful iron here to actually make this happen there's no electrical uh, connectivity to these pads this is merely for support so we do want to make sure we have a good size blob on there and in case you are wondering I am using leaded solder this is 6040 solder another item that I recently got in my mailbag video I don't like the lead free stuff most hobbyists I think don't okay and just do a little trim job on these guys now there are no uh, spacers on this for uh, mounts that's it we just need to get the uh, actual uh, prior secondary coil on here so I'm gonna go ahead and get something to actually remove that enamel maybe some light sandpaper or something well I couldn't find my micro sandpaper so I'm just gonna use a little razor knife and just gently scrape it away And you'll know when you got it because you'll see the copper actually start to come out on this wire. So I'm going to go ahead and get that soldered in. And then the other thing I'll do is, is I'll use some hot glue and just glue it into place. And that's the whole coil. So let's power this up and see exactly what happens here. Well, here goes nothing. This is supposed to be actually positive tipped power supply. And I know that because two things, well, one, they had a little plus right here on the board. And that just happens to be next to the uh, uh, center pin on this. And then the other thing is if we follow it out, if we trace this looking at that schematic earlier, it goes through that actual capacitor there and then down into the middle of these two LEDs, which is where positive is. However, on the listing, they say that negative is in the middle. So I don't know if they have that wrong in the description there or if they actually have it marked wrong on the board here. So, but, well, we'll see. It's either going to work or it's going to blow up. So let's try it out and see what happens. Oh, it works. Cool. Not sure if you could see that or not, but there is indeed a little tiny spark coming out the end of that. Let me kill some lights here. Oh, and this transistor is getting really hot really fast. I can feel it in my hand here. Yeah, there you go. Here's that little blue. Wow, yeah, that's really warm. And only one LED is lighting up, but that's okay. Let's hold this off to the side over here. Can we set the paper on fire? Oh, my power supply died. Yeah, it's getting a bit warm. Okay, let me just uh, reset my power supply here. It does need a one amp supply. I'm putting out 10 amps out of this power supply, but it's silent, you can't hear anything, but oh yeah. It definitely set the paper on fire. So that's enough of that. But yeah, that's pretty cool. But my power supply keeps dying. So I'm not sure if that's something with my power supply or not. I noticed before just messing around with my lights over here um, that was causing issue. Let me actually unplug my lights and see what happens. Yeah, that's better. You can hear the fan kick in the full speed. 
I was actually using the negative uh, 12 volt side over here to power my bench lights, but you'll hear the fan, it shuts right off. So we'll just leave that off as it is. And uh, well, let me just kill one more light here. And here's that neon tube. If we put it next to it, you can see it lights up pretty brightly and you can put it anywhere near the coil over here. Pretty cool. I definitely like that and pretty neat. So yeah, celebrating 200 ch videos and 1200 subscribers with Sparks. So the next thing we'll do just briefly here is we'll get a top load on this and we'll see if that actually increases this at all. Well, I got a top load on there in the form of a little balled up piece of tin foil. And well, we don't have a spark to look at anymore, but I can certainly show you that the little mini uh, bulb over here definitely lights up pretty easily. And if I want, I can splay the leads out a little bit. And if I get close enough, we will actually get um, an arc right off the end of that. But it gets kind of kind of warm in my hand, so I have to not do that for too long. And I understand if you do this with an LED, it'll do the same thing. It'll actually ignite the phosphor in it. So let's see if that, that does what we want it to do. Yeah, see, we can get the LED to glow. wirelessly pretty neat uh, i don't think i have any compact fluorescent bulbs around here at least not that i'm seeing hold on one moment i might actually aha i do let's see what this guy does oh look at that that is really cool definitely really really cool so you can do some pretty neat experiments with this. Uh, honestly, this is really all I've seen online though. I mean, I have a whole big bag of these little neon indicators, so maybe we can get the whole bag to light up, but that's pretty cool in its own merit. Put it right next to that and get that to glow. But anyway, that gets pretty darn warm, so I don't wanna let that run for too long because, uh, because of heat. But anyway, yeah, there we go. A little mini Tesla coil kit. I'll put a link to that in the description below. I'll put some links to some other cool stuff. Like I said, Electro Booms video, Great Scott's videos. They're both uh, electronic engineers, so they can definitely explain how this works way, way better than I possibly can. And well, with that, guys, I wanna thank you for watching my videos. And if you're not already a subscriber, you can click up here to subscribe. Don't forget, I have other channels. This is gonna be the link to the PTS Extras channel where there's all kinds of cool stuff. And there'll also be two other videos in addition to the other ones I mentioned. Uh, Cooking with Crispy, I have a video up on that page tonight. And on the Extras channel, I have a grill video where I actually convert a, a propane grill to a gas grill. So definitely go check those videos out, guys. And th thanks again, we'll see you around.